Hi everybody, it's Mike from Prime Habitat Builders. Uh, we're on location in Vernon, BC at one of our latest uh, net zero houses here on Okanagan Landing Road on Okanagan Landing or on Okanagan Lake. Um, we're just going to actually head inside the house and just have a quick look at some of the uh, air barrier details that we're doing and tie-ins with some of our different roof assemblies and wall assemblies and stuff like that. So this is a really good time to actually go through the house on the inside prior to drywall. Uh, we just had the dense pack cellulose done and the ceilings and then the walls and I just thought this would be a really good chance to kind of give you a quick walkthrough and show you some of the detailing um, items that we take care of at this stage in the game. So why don't you come on in, just give me a follow me and we'll go and check out the house. This is a really cool little project. It's uh, got some really unique features in the house here. Uh, we have a suspended slab uh, for our garage system that was, was done prefab from Rapid Span here in Armstrong. We had a construction timeline that was in the middle of winter, so it was going to be hard to do concrete work on the side of this hill. So we managed to go with a pre slab or pre cast slab assemblies. It's kind of hard to see there in the dark, but there's seven precast slab sections that we flew in with a crane and landed for our garage which is a two-car garage and that's tied to an elevator shaft on the right hand side here just between the upper level of the garage and the house for wheelchair access and for uh, aging in place and that sort of thing for this house there'll be a set of stairs that goes up on the outside but of course the elevator shaft for uh, for access for, for the clients I just wanted to come on into the house and just show you some of the details that we're working on. This is our front entryway here. Um, we have a about a 15, I think it's 15 and a half inch thick double stud wall assembly. So it creates some interesting and some unique design challenges when it comes to putting windows and doors in. There's lots and lots and lots of different options and things to be done and ways that, that can be done. So we have a custom sill here that's approximately eight inches deep and a customized jam assembly and as we come into the house I'll just show you some of the details that we're working on inside. Come on in. So here at the front door we're just in into the stage where we're installing our Intello air barriers and tying them into what we call our floppy bits. So these are the rough in bits that are put in when we build the frame assemblies and our guys are actually just in the process of uh, hanging the Intello which is our interior air barrier and this will be folded over and taped and that sort of thing. With this custom jam we've done um, because of a thickness of our wall assembly we've done a jam assembly that's customized in MDF and this is going to get a drywalled corner bead here. So once we put the square corner bead, this will just look like a normal inset wall kind of detail, which is a nice, nice little detail. It takes a little bit of extra work to build our own custom assemblies. And we've got a lot of a custom assemblies in this house for the front door and for the laundry room door. Uh, and out by the lake here, we've got some lift and slide in a tech, uh, triple pane, triple glazed, uh, high performance windows and door assemblies. We'll walk through here and show you some of that stuff here in a, in a few minutes. Um, and at this stage in the game, uh, if you maybe just turn the camera up towards the upper area here in the stairwell, we're just doing a lot of Intello detailing for the ceiling. We just had our dense pack insulators in here last week. And uh, what we've ended up with, uh, we've got a couple of different uh, roof assemblies here. We've got our primary roof, which is our roof one. It's an R66 roof assembly. I won't get into all the construction details on that, but uh, that's an R66. Our secondary roof assembly over our master bedroom is slightly different. Uh, it's an R62, and that's a flat roof assembly with torch on roofing up above. And we've got R49 for our double stud walls. On the, it's our primary wall. But in a couple of locations throughout the house, we had the necessity to change our wall assemblies to reduce the wall thickness down but we still wanted to keep a fairly high R value to them. So we've used some closed cell spray foam in some of those assemblies, which of course changes where the assembly tie in to the Intello and the door systems and things like that work. So why don't you just follow me around here and I'm just gonna give you a, a first hand look at what an absolutely stunning professional job our dense pack insulators uh, have done on this. I, I actually love this product. If you look down this wall here, you can see 
that the, the netting has been installed. And this is like a very fibrous net that allows the insulator through these little holes here to insert his nozzle and fill this whole cavity with insulation. Once again, this wall is about 15 and a half inches thick. And this netting is very breathable because when they pump this insulation in, it's mostly about 85 or 90% air volume. So there's a lot of air that needs to escape from the cavity. If we put our Intello product over top, we can't blow the cavity very well because there's not enough permeability for this for the air to get out. So it's, it's kind of a double step process. So we put the net on first and as you can see, they don't just staple the net on the, on the face of the stud here because it is fairly, um, uh, it's fairly dense product. You can feel it, it feels like the bottom of a couch actually. And this can be pushed in and sort of flattened down. But this is called lip stitching. And the staples here are about every three quarters of an inch. And you can see this whole side here is riddled with staples. And it becomes very tight uh, fabric assembly for the insulators to then blow into. They then have a roller that we can run over top of this just to kind of flatten and even out the wall assembly before we put drywall on. Um, we use a 16 inch spacing so that it reduces the bulging in our walls because our wall is already thermally broken because we're doing a double stud two by four wall. So there's a, an outer structural wall of two by four, a space of about 13 inches or so. And then we have, this is our inner wall here. And you can actually see the depth. If we just take you over to this section, don't mind the HRV tubing. But this is, gives you an idea of the, the depth of our of our customized window jam in here with our Intello folded right in and taped right to the window frame. So this is a completely airtight assembly in, in this section here. And this is our typical wall assembly for the whole entire house, upstairs, downstairs. And then we have a few wall sections that, like I said, we customize. Like over here, come around to this little area, we uh, actually got a spot over by the lakeside which um, for various reasons with the door assembly this is a lift and slide in a tech door we wanted to maximize the views and just because we had a lot of spray foam going on in the header over here it was an easier tie-in to do rather than doing a double stud wall around here we did what was called a thermally broken wall assembly on the inside of our two by six structural wall so there's a little bit of spray foam in there with a thermal strap of uh, high density insulation. It's about an inch and a half thick. And then we put a three quarter inch strap on top of that. So we, it's a slightly, or it's a less, uh, a, a smaller, our, our lower number R value than our primary wall assembly. But because the surface area is fairly small, it was a good balance of uh, function and performance for the aesthetic look that we wanted to accomplish with this large lift and slide door here. Um, but that creates, of course, some interesting challenges when it comes to doing our tie-ins with our vapor barrier or our air barrier, which is at the Atello and our foam spray line up here in our box ends. So there's a lot of detailing that gets done around the windows and doors at this stage in the game, which takes me to sort of our next area. If you want to just follow me around this way. In our laundry room area, we have another custom door, and we can actually bring the camera over and just have a close look. Our clients in this particular build wanted to do a, um, a low threshold or a, a basically a zero um, step over sill for wheelchair access in the future. And of course that creates some challenges when it comes to doing airtight door assemblies. And if you just come and have a look at this one. Hey Todd, can you do me a favor and grab that sill? Oh, here it is right here. We're actually using a a thermally broken aluminum sill with a really low profile to the bottom of it. And this has been customized so that it's thermally broken and it'll create an airtight seal on the bottom. And this is a 34 inch wide door here. So a minimum uh, size requirement for ADA compliant. So for wheelchair access, this will get uh, sealed up in the next couple of days once we are in preparation for our blower door test. But this wall assembly has also um, been minimized because we have the requirement for a heat pump hot water tank that was a bit of a design change that needed to happen right here in this corner. So you can see 
this wall in the corner here has been reduced down from a 15 inch wall down to a 10 inch thick wall and of course it needs to be airtight so we've thermally broken this uh, at our stud assemblies and then we've spray foamed this to tie the air barrier from here to our door frame which is then uh, tied with will be tied here with Intello and with um, Prosico sealant around this perimeter and that'll tie that wall assembly in together. I'll take you upstairs in the next uh, segment just to show you some of the detailing that we're doing in the ceiling is in some of the roof areas and at our HRV. We'll be right back in just a sec.